Everyone is here. I think so. I think we missed one person, but it's okay. We can start. Okay, we we can start. Uh, welcome, no. everyone. No uh, thanks for joining this class. Uh, I'm Isabella Carrino, and I run with my partner Gisella and Carlotta. She's not here. Uh, Bay Area Italian Events. Um, Bay Area Italian Events is a startup. Uh, focused on promoting Italian culture and traditions. <laughs> um, today I'm here to help you during this call, during this class, um, give, uh, to give you few, a few housekeeping rules. Um, first of all, I will ask you um, to mute yourself so we can avoid background noises during the call. And second, if you'd like to ask a question, you can write the question in the chat. We will use the chat during the class to share with you the recipe, the ingredients, and whatever. Or you can unmute yourself and ask the question directly to Gianluca and Mattia. Okay? Uh, with this say, I will leave the floor to Gianluca and Mattia and enjoy the class. Okay? Buonasera. Buonasera. Buonasera a tutti. Quanti siete? Dove siete? Vi vorrei vedere tutti più vicini. Uh, welcome. Welcome to uh, 50 for Mint. Welcome to uh, our house. Uh, we're very excited to be doing this and uh, to pass to you guys uh, some knowledge, information on uh, some Roman staples, uh, which are these days uh, became more and more popular, especially the cacio e pepe, that everyone is trying to achieve the best way to uh, make. Um, feel free to, uh, as Isabella said, to uh, take notes, uh, ask questions uh, uh, at uh, any given time. And uh, uh, again, we're very excited. I'm going to leave this, uh, the word to Mattia, who I believe uh, um, uh, it's preparing uh, these three dishes, uh, starting from the most famous Amatriciana, from the town of Amatrice, affected by a terrible earthquake a few years ago. So we're happy to support uh, in that sense as well. And uh, I'm gonna uh, take uh, 30 seconds uh, a break to go get a bottle of wine, because uh, you must drink some wine. You can't be without a drink while you're cooking. Benvenuti e buon appetito. Thank you so much, everybody, to sign up for the class. Uh, so we did this one on purpose in, uh, as you see, this is uh, Gianluca's uh, kitchen. We did it at home, so we want to show you how everybody can actually remake those dishes at, at home. You know, everybody, when they come to the restaurant, they ask me, how can you make the cacio e pepe so creamy? How can you make the matriciana? So we want to show you uh, all the tricks and uh, different ideas so you can cook at home and basically you can have uh, restaurants uh, quality and recipe at your home. So first of all, we start uh, with the guanciale. If you can follow me uh, to the uh, other camera, I want to show you the guanciale. This one is a local guanciale from uh, Alepia. It's one of the best you can find here in the uh, United States. So in this we're going to use it for the matriciana and for the carbonara. Different recipe. They use the pancetta, but uh, the original recipe for the matriciana and the carbonara, they use guanciale, as you can see the amount of fat that we have. Uh, it's really important when you use the guanciale, uh, that you cut it uh, in the large pieces, just because uh, after you cook it, basically it's gonna shrink of all the fat. So don't be scared to cut it on a bigger chunk, because you wanna actually taste it and having uh, a bite of it when you have when you grab your pasta. So I already cut some to start off with a matriciana. So the first thing we're gonna do, obviously, we have our water boiling. So if you have that one ahead, beautiful for all the people that be cooking with me. This one is the guanciale that we cut for the matriciana. You guys should have all the recipe. So for the people that they wanna, they will start cooking with me the matriciana, we're going to start making the sugo for the matriciana. It's going to take a little bit longer than the other preparation. Okay. 
So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna cook the guanciale. We don't need any oil, anything from the guanciale. We're just gonna uh, cook it in the fat, it's gonna release. So this is the recipe that we have, the guanciale. We're gonna put it in the pan and let it start cooking it. Uh, for the matriciana pasta, we're gonna use the muti. It's one of my favorite pelati. We're gonna use some pecorino romano cheese. And uh, we have two kind of pasta. We're gonna use our uh, homemade bucatini for the amatechana, which is like typical pasta for the amatechana. So first off, we're gonna start cooking the guanciale on the pan. Uh, I always suggest to, to cook the guanciale uh, medium fire uh, because you don't wanna burn it. I always like the guanciale to be crispy on the, on the outside but uh, to be nice and uh, soft in the inside. Because if you cook it too much, basically you're gonna have a, when try this too crispy, it's gonna uh, get a little bitter on the flavor. So that's the, that's the thing with the guanciale. So for, with whoever's gonna make the amatriciana pasta, make sure that you guys have the pasta water ready for it's boiling and uh, to cook the guanciale first. So the guanciale just has to get a little bit of color. It doesn't have to be burned. And it's really important that we don't add any fat to the guanciale because the guanciale itself has a lot of fat in it. So the matriciana recipe, some people add onion, some people sub the guanciale with the pancetta. Uh, you can do that, obviously. If you don't find the guanciale, if you find a good pancetta, you can use that. Uh, I'm just gonna teach you what the original recipe would be with the, with this recipe. One little uh, uh, small detail about a matriciana <laughs> is that was uh, generated uh, in first place uh, without tomato. Uh, keep in mind that all these dishes were, uh, uh, I don't wanna use the word invented, but it, they were, uh, they've been uh, put together, uh, put on a table um, by people that didn't have uh, great resources uh, other than uh, great ingredients. So initially, uh, guanciale uh, was uh, one of the scraps uh, from the pig that was used in alternative to pancetta. Uh, and uh, so, Historically speaking, amatriciana uh, was born as a dish without uh, tomato. Tomato was something added after the fact. Just a little, um, yeah. I want to show you from the uh, camera. As you can see, the guanciale is already getting crispy up. Uh, you can see it's already releasing some of the fat. So what we're going to do with this guanciale, we're basically going to cook it, take it off, and then we're going to add the tomato sauce are cooking the, the sauce. Is the sound of the fan bothering anybody? Yes? No? We're good? Perfect. So we get our one challenge nice and crispy. So when you see the one challenge, it's crispy up like that. It's when you guys have to Take it out from the fire. So we're gonna take it out. And we're gonna put it on other people. Put that we're gonna let it dry. So once you do that, now we can start adding our passata. Good, I'm muted. You want to see if the passata with a little bit of salt. Just be careful with the sauce because the panchale already have uh, salt as well as the pasta water. So especially with this uh, three recipe, I always suggest uh, not to salt in water too much. I put all the uh, recipes in the exact amount of salt. Pasta water, 
as exactly what the boss of the soft salt for the sauce as well. So while we get this going, if anybody has any question about your schema de Montana, what's what's one challenge, don't be shy, uh, ask a question. The one challenge is the four chip uh why the pancetta is actually the best. For this specific recipe, the one chali is a very good just because it gets a little bit more fat, so you get a lot of more flavor to the pasta. So while we have the Marquichana sauce cooking, we're going to start with the carbonara. So whoever is going to make the carbonara with me, we're going to start making the carbonara as well. Same thing for the Marquichana. We're not going to use any fat, just going to start with the one chali itself. The fat. No oil, we're going to do almost the same process of the No, no. What Mattia just said, as far as no oil, is crucial. Don't add olive oil when you are uh, making, uh, when you're frying the guanciale. It's its own fat that's going to play their role. So don't add olive oil or seed oil of any kind. And now, uh, uh, just to open and close parentheses on this uh, small topic, What's very important is that you don't add too much salt to your water where you're going to be cooking your pasta because guanciale is cured uh, with uh, uh, different herbs, but a uh, majority of it, pepper and salt. So if you add too much salt to your uh, water, you're going to end up with uh, a dish that's going to be a little too uh, strong uh, and uh, sappy. So try to uh, keep that in mind. So another thing for the Matuchana, you can obviously add some uh, chili flakes if you like, or some pepper. Uh, I don't really suggest it, especially if you because it's already marinated with a with the pepper. But uh, you can add chili flakes, you can add black pepper to it. Here we do the same thing for the Matuchana with the carbonara. So whoever is cooking the carbonara with me, we basically gonna crispy up the guanciale. Hi everyone. Uh, I want to say that we have two cameras. So if you want to check, we have another camera close to the pan, so we, you can see closely Mattia what is doing. So basically the manchala is going to get crispy up and we're going to do the same things in the matriciana. We're going to put a separate plate to let it drain. And uh, for the carbonara pasta, we're going to use uh, our homemade rigatoni that is making with just uh, water, uh, semolina flour. And we're going to cook it. Always uh, my suggestion, especially this kind of pasta that are homemade, that they take five to six minutes to get cooked. Always make sure to have your sauce ready before uh, you start cooking your pasta. So the way you don't have uh, the pasta that is going to cook first and then the sauce is not going to be ready. So make sure to set up your sauce first to have the sauce ready. And then you can always put it in a low, medium fire. Uh, and then you can drop the pasta. You usually follow the instruction on the pasta uh, package that you find. Depending on the pasta that you're using, usually it's between uh, 9 to 40 minutes with plants. Salute! Cheers, everyone! Who's gonna do anything? Cheers! Oh, Cheers! Good! Yeah, thanks, Sebastian. So Alla faccia del Covid! Salute! Salute! Who is cooking with Mattia? Uh, Kimberly, maybe? Kimberly, are you cooking? I'm cooking. Good. Yeah. The matriciana or carbonara? I'm trying to do both. <laughs> oh, good. Wow. This is the guanciale for the carbonara. So for the carbonara, actually, we're going to take out half of the guanciale and the other half we're going to leave it in the pan. Why? Uh, this is the way that I like it, I want to have a true consistency for the guanciale. One is going to be cooked with the pasta water, so it's going to be 
get all the flavor. It's gonna be nice and tender. The other one we're gonna put it when uh, when we're gonna finish our sauce and just put it on top. And it's gonna have this crispy guanciale on top. So the good thing, once we get the guanciale crispy, we're gonna turn off turn off the fire for our guanciale, and we're gonna add some pasta water to it. That's why it's really important not to over salt the pasta water. It's always good to wait a little bit so you don't splash yourself with a uh, hot oil because as you know water and oil doesn't get along together too much so we're gonna wait a minute or so and we're gonna add some pasta water that's how we're gonna get our creaminess from the from the sauce from the carbonara we don't use any cream forget about cream forget about butter in these uh, typical dishes butter and cream is something that you know uh, everybody in the world, I want to say USA, uh, to the kitchen. It's just because it's easier to cook with cream. It's easier to make uh, creamier pasta with butter and cream. But what's what's going to happen? You actually going to cover all the flavor from the guanciale. So if you put chicken or if you put guanciale or if you put any other protein to your pasta, it's going to taste like cream. So there's no point to cook with cream. Unless you're making panna cotta, then obviously you're going to use the cream. So once the guanciale is ready, we're gonna add the pasta water to it. I would say half a cup is more than enough. And I wanna show you, so once you put the pasta water to your pan, you're really gonna see uh, cream coming up. Oil, and uh, the oil actually is not oil, it's the fat from the guanciale, and the pasta water. That's you get already your creaminess, and then what you have to do, you have just to wait a little bit, a little bit, a little bit is gonna cool down. So for the carbonara, we're gonna use our mix of eggs. We mix in the eggs uh, with the guanciale, with the pecorino and the pepper. So once the our pan is gonna be nice and cool, we're gonna add the mix of the eggs. Why we don't wanna add the mix of the eggs right now? Because if you put the eggs right now, it's just gonna scramble up with the with all the heat from the pan. So we wanna, you know, leave the pan alone, let it cool down a little bit. You can mix it up. So basically, you fasten up the the process. And Gianluca is gonna scramble our eggs. We're gonna add. We are on the other camera on the. We're gonna add the pecorino romano to the egg, and we're gonna add some fresh black pepper. So for the black pepper, uh, that's what we'll be using. We actually toast it a little bit on the pan itself for a few minutes, a low fire, just to get a little bit extra flavor. So you let it, basically you toast it, you let it cool down, and then you put it on your pepper meal, easy. Uh, it's, just, it's just to enhance the flavor. So Luca is basically mixing the, the eggs right now. Uh, I usually use one egg per person. That should be more than enough, especially if you buy large eggs. Uh, you can add, there's some people that like to add a yolk. So you basically do a whole egg and a yolk. You're gonna have a more rich carbonara. You're gonna have a different color. I like to use the whole eggs because, you know, uh, Roman cuisine, we don't use to waste anything. So basically you have an eggs, you use the whole eggs. So I'm gonna show you the yeah. recipe. You wanna, uh, <clears throat> this is uh, the consistency that you kind of want to try to achieve. Not too loose, not too thick. Can you guys see it? Thumb up, yes? Beautiful. Yes, so we see it. I'm gonna start dropping on my pasta because I know that the sauce is ready. Uh, usually, Per person is uh, around 100 grams of pasta. Of course, if you want to eat more, myself, I can eat uh, way more than 100 grams of pasta. We want more, we, more, we want more. So, once you have your sauce with the guanciale and the pasta water ready, you see that it's nice uh, and warm, it's not too hot. We're gonna start putting our eggs. While Mattia does this, uh, there is a very important uh, point uh, about pecorino. Uh, pecorino Romano uh, is uh, a aged 
cheese. And uh, the more you age uh, cheese, the more salt content you're gonna get. So a lot of what we also do here in the United States where Pecorino is imported from Italy, obviously, uh, we add a small percentage of Parmigiano to cut through that saltiness. So if you have a Pecorino, if you're using a Pecorino that is uh, extra sharp, that is might end up with uh, making your dish too um, rich in flavor. Uh, add a, a 10, 20% of Parmigiano Reggiano to balance it off. It's just a little trick that we use. It's not to cheat on the recipe. It's uh, just being, uh, uh, you know, honest with, uh, with the fact that uh, Pecorino tends to have a higher content of salt uh, when it travels. Uh, uh, compared to those that you find uh, in uh, motherland. So this is gonna be for the carbonara. As you can see, we put the eggs inside the mix of the water de guanciale, and you can see you really make a sauce. Uh, now what's gonna happen, when our pasta is gonna be ready, we're gonna put the fire really low. We're gonna cook it really low, we're gonna cook it together, because I wanna show you when is the point to take the carbonara off. So keep in mind that the pan is still cooking. So if you think that it's still, the sauce is still too loose, it's gonna be, that's gonna be the point when you have to take it off because the pan is gonna be hot and the sauce is gonna keep cooking it. Otherwise you're gonna make a, basically scramble eggs. We don't wanna do that. We wanna have the, uh, the sauce be nice, silk and uh, smooth and go along with the pasta. So our rigatoni usually cook in uh, four minutes, more or less. Uh, I always try Every pasta I try myself because it depends about the water temperature, depends about everything. I always put a timer on. I'm a chef. I always put a timer on uh, for whatever I think the pasta will be ready. Of course, I always gonna wanna have my pasta al dente, uh, especially because this one we gonna cook it with the sauce again. So don't be afraid to taste your salt, to, to, to taste your pasta for salt, to taste your pasta for uh, when it's ready. Uh, sometimes I take a minute of the, whatever the package say about the cooking time, just because you wanna fill the pasta, you wanna make sure it's the right consistency for your recipe. So we're gonna cook, the pasta is almost ready. We set up the 30 seconds. Uh, when's the pasta, we know that we're gonna start taking the pasta off, we're gonna put the fire for the carbonara sauce really low. Because you know, the lower it's gonna be, the more time you have to uh, cook the sauce and uh, not to make the scrambled eggs. Pasta is ready. This is a home kitchen, not a professional restaurant kitchen. So. We're trying to be as realistic as possible so you guys can uh, duplicate this more easily because it uh, might be too easy to, for us to do it in a professional kitchen. Uh, the, the real deal is when we get home and uh, we try to do it with, uh, with a few tools that we have. But it's easy, it's not complicated. Here we go, all the pasta is in the pan. Now we're gonna start the fire low and we're gonna start cooking our carbonara sauce. Don't be afraid to leave it low. Uh, you're not gonna overcook the pasta. The egg, although it's gonna start cooking really fast. So what you have to do, you just have to wait. Uh, and you can see the sauce start bubbling a little bit. That's when the sauce basically is gonna get some heat. And that's when you have to start moving. It's about uh, keeping on the fire. And if you feel that it's overcooking a little bit, you basically just took it off from the fire and uh, you're gonna start moving it a little bit differently. Okay. It's all about moving. The sauce is still, uh, as right now, is still nice and loose. Uh, don't be afraid to leave it on the fire. We just need to move it. Voy a meter un piatto con la chilo que estamos haciendo. 
So as right now, my carbonara start the sauce to start bubbling a little bit more. That means that the eggs to start cooking it. So what you have to do? Just moving it. If you feel like it's cooking, it's cooking too fast. Take it off the fire for a little bit, and then you put it back on. It's gonna take you time. Your first carbonara will be a mess for sure. It's gonna don't be a free be, with don't pasta. Don't be afraid to make it. Don't be afraid to pay attention and learn from your mistake and say, "Oh, maybe I took the carbonara off the fire too late." That's what you're gonna learn. So. One very small but important detail uh, that uh, Mattia uh, put into uh, place is to help yourself with the uh, water. That will allow you to avoid the frittata part, uh, making carbonara. Because a lot of people just go with eggs in the hot pan or hot pasta. That's gonna make everything scramble. So help yourself with, uh, with the water. Uh, that you're using uh, to cook the pasta, that's gonna uh, prevent any uh, disaster, guaranteed. Our sauce is almost coming together. It's a little bit still loose, but it's coming together with all the fire from the, from the pan. Another trick is when you see that it's the, the sauce is start getting thick, lower the fire a little bit more. Don't leave the pan uh, on way high fire, otherwise you're gonna scramble for sure. And this is the consistency you wanna reach for the carbonara. So it's still a little bit loose, if you can see from the other uh, camera. It's still a little bit loose, but since the pan is still really hot, it's basically gonna still cooking. And this is the... The result we're gonna get a nice and creamy you look just with one egg how much creaminess we reach for the carbonara you want to you say this one is closer you guys are gonna see on the plate but another thing that i like to do on my plate on the bottom of the plate i like to put some pecorino on the bottom of the plate it's a little trick and some pepper and then we're gonna put our pasta on top. Always use this spatula because you don't wanna uh, beat your nice and sauce with the dishwasher. So we're just gonna top it off the pasta with the extra sauce. Then we're gonna put some of uh, our guanciale that we left it, so it's a nice garnish and we're gonna give another consistency to the pasta. And then we're gonna finish with uh, some, some more pecorino cheese and some fresh black pepper. Yeah. And this is should be how the carbonara should come up. Nice and creamy. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. You guys should smell it because we wish you guys were here and we could eat it together. <laughs> this is why, soon I promise. This is why I like, if you come on the other camera, this is why I like to cut my conchado nice and thick because it shouldn't cut a little bit, but you still have a nice, a nice chunk. That's what you want to taste while you're eating. And uh, why I choose the rigatoni? for this kind of pasta is because I love when the guanciale go inside the rigatoni and then, you know, you have, basically you have everything together on one bite. That is, basically it's heaven. Now we have a problem. Who's gonna eat this carbonara? <laughs> this is a big problem. I got a couple of ladies outside with a glass of wine. I think they're gonna appreciate this. Okay, so now we're gonna go on for the cacio e pepe. Cacio e pepe is super quick, super easy. Super easy. Whoever is making the cacio e pepe with me, stay focused. I will start with a ball. That's where we're gonna put all our ingredients. Pecorino cheese, black pepper, and pasta water, that's it. 
and you make the cashew pepper. All the trick is how basically to make it without scramble up. We're gonna first start by putting the pecorino in our bowl. For you know people that don't know cashew pepper basically means pecorino cheese and black pepper. So those should be the only two ingredients. Don't put butter, don't put cream on the cashew pepper. You need to use a nice amount of pepper to do this recipe. So basically that's what I get. Pecorino and pepper inside a bowl. Now it's gonna come the tricky part. We're gonna add some pasta water to it. I put on the recipe, I put the amount of pasta water you need. It always depends about how much pecorino you put. Be mindful always to add a little bit at a time until you get the consistency you want. And then we're just gonna whisk. We're just gonna whisk our sauce. You're basically making a cream out of the pasta water and the pecorino cheese. This is what you get. It's almost a, uh, it's a very similar consistency to the carbonara consistency that you saw previously. So try to achieve that uh, thickness. Nothing else. You obviously, as we say, since the pecorino here, it's really strong, it's really salty, you can always uh, put a little bit of parmigiano to cut off the softening of the pasta. Cacio pepe is a salty pasta. That's what it is. It's basically pepper and cheese. That's what you get. You get a pungent uh, from the pepper and you get the saltiness for pecorino cheese. If you want to add 20% of the parmigiano and take off 20% of the pecorino, you can do that. You're going to have a softer version. Uh, let's get a plate yeah, for the cacio Mattia, could you show the cream on this camera too? Yes. That's what you get. It's basically a cream made of uh, cheese, pepper, and pasta water. It's a paste uh, that you want to achieve. It's like uh, the, the cream is what's going to become, um, once you add uh, the, uh, the water, the hot water and the, and the pasta. So you want to create that sort of base uh, when you put together the, um, the pecorino uh, to the wall. I'm going to drop to the water our tonnelli pasta. That's what we're going to cook for the, for the cacio pepe. Same things that we're going to do that we did for the carbonara. We have in our plate right here. Uh, this is, by the way, those are my personal bowl that I use with a friend of mine from Auckland that he does that. She does all sort of bowl with beautiful uh, porcelana. How do you say porcelana? Porcelain. Uh, if you're interested, let us know. We, we, we can get you in touch with uh, uh, everything that is happening. So we have our pasta cooking. Basically, the cashew pepe doesn't touch fire anymore. This cream doesn't touch fire anymore. So it's really tricky because once you, you drain your pasta, you put it into a bowl, you have to be quick to mix it with the cream and you have to be quick uh, to plate it and send it out because it's never gonna be a hot pasta. The cashew pepe doesn't have to touch fire, otherwise it's gonna scramble the pecorino cheese. Even if you put a low fire, uh, that's the way I do it. Especially right now with this beautiful day, you know, uh, it's a perfect pasta. He asked me to uh, wash the dishes already. Yeah, but in, in Italian, really, you know, really politely. Isabella, is there a way to hear people uh, laugh or say something? Yeah, can we yeah, open they can unmute themselves. You guys, uh, we, we miss humanity. We need yeah, uh, absolutely. more interaction. Don't be afraid to ask. Gandhi? I see Jacopo, Giulia, Daniel, all familiar faces. Uh, we want to hear your voice, guys. Uh, Mescudi, signori? 
Oh, <ride> finalmente. finalmente. Buona, buonanotte, signori. I see Paolo Merli. Paolo Merli, another great chef. What an honor <ride> to have you uh, part of this uh, uh, Zoom conference. So it's really tricky now. Uh, when you drain the pasta from the pasta water, I always, basically, if you drain your sink, I always keep, keep a cup of pasta water handy with you because you may always gonna need it. Uh, for whatever pasta you make, I use pasta water. So uh, in this occasion, we're just gonna drain it with our tongue. Uh, but be careful to not put too much water inside the bowl of the cashew paper. Because even if you seem uh, nice and thick right now, when you're gonna put the pasta that is hot, the, this basically this cream is gonna start opening up and you don't want to have a loose pasta otherwise you have to add more cheese and then it would be too much cheese too salty too overpowering our pasta is almost ready so we're gonna drain really carefully not to have too much water Remember, your base is going to be uh, the ingredients, the pecorino, the pepper, and everything. You, the, the way you're going to play with them is going to be adding water at the right time. So keep that always in mind because people have the tendency to uh, make sauces uh, like ready to go in the bowl before you add anything to it. Uh, with these dishes, it works the other way around. Okay, so you want to use the water to create uh, that. Uh, perfect consistency. So uh, always keep that in mind. So I add the pasta. The sauce is a little bit too thick. That's a good thing, meaning that we need some more water instead of uh, needing more cheese. So we're going to add slowly a little bit of water to have uh, our creaminess at the right point. Just add a little bit of water at the time. You don't want to put too much water. Begging your pardon, Chef. If you want to increase for this recipe, for this recipe, if you want to make for more people, do you just like add? Do you add like half or double per person, or what's your proportioning per person? You say, uh, uh, are you talking about the cheese? Yeah, uh, for everything. Like, for, yeah, for everything. For food. You just double up the recipe. Just double up the recipe. Cacio e pepe. You don't need. Uh, if you make a cacio e pepe, I always suggest. No more than three, four people because it's a really hard pasta to do. Yeah, yeah if yes. you want to make a uh, country paper for five or six people, it's going to be very, very challenging. You can do it, but you're going to end up with a lumpy uh, um, sauce. This is basically our sauce that you want to get. It is not lumpy, it's nice and cream. Look, exactly. It looks like we put cream on it. I mean, look at the, the way it slides out of the bowl. Don't let it slide. So it uh, make sure you put your mouth underneath uh, so it won't <laughs> fall to the ground. Same thing, we're going to put some pecorino, some black pepper. We're going to put the pasta on top. I'm always gonna, as I say, always use a spatula, especially for this creamy pasta. Because it's got me washing it all the time. Gianluca, while you wait, I have a question. Yes. Why, why use cooking water? Why aqua di cottura or cooking aqua water di cottura instead of just is, hot water? Aqua di cottura is fundamental because when you add pasta to it, all the amides, amido, amides, right? Or the starch. All the starch gets released, so it's gonna help with uh, the, your sauce binding uh, with the cheese and uh, avoid those uh, um, uh, lumpiness. So, hope you guys can see the creaminess of the pasta. He looked like we almost cook with a, I don't know, ricotta cheese or mascarpone. It's already creamy by himself. So if you use the cooking water, you use the cheese correctly, you mix it up, that's what you're gonna get. A creamy pasta. But like imagine without using, without overpowering with the cream or with the butter, you're gonna get the, basically the pecorino cheese and the pepper. That's what you have to get for this kind of pasta. Bye. Oh, Kimberly. 
You made your pasta. Show us. Show us. Is it the cacio pepe or carbonara? It's the pepe. Oh, wow. It's good? <laughs> it's good. It's really good. Perfect. Not as creamy as it should be. Okay. <laughs> a little more water, pasta water, but it's delicious. Next time, you see, now you know. Next time is always going to be better. I'll be at the point that, you know, you're going to take my job. And leave yes, so don't, be, don't be afraid to make mistakes. So that's how you learn. I mean, uh, keep in mind, these were dishes invented by people that were not professional chefs. Okay, very important. People feel intimidated uh, and constantly challenged by these kind of things. Uh, get away from what they say on the internet. Everybody seems to be like, uh, wants to try to be a chef now. Snap out of that uh, uh, state of mind. We are, we all, we are chefs. All of us are chefs inside because we, we need cooking, not to not cook because we need to survive and depend on ourselves, not on others. Sorry, I get uh, very, very emotional when it comes to this point because uh, people need to understand that this is uh, what we need to know for our own existence and not just because we want to have fun. Obviously, that comes along with it. So our struggle for the matriciana is nice and ready. It's nice and thick. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to add the guanciale. They were previously crispy up. We're gonna add it to the sugo. Turn the fire off. I add the guanciale and I'm gonna add the pecorino cheese on the sauce right now. This is what you should see. Tomato sauce, guanciale, and pecorino. Let it rest. Now we're gonna drop our pasta in. Well, we're gonna use our bucatini. This is our homemade bucatini. Why is called bucatini? Gianluca, tell me. It's called bucatini. Uh, bucatino, uh, uh, the word bucatino comes from buca, whole, whole. So it's a long pasta, uh, spaghetti-like, with a little aloe uh, hole in the, in the middle. So the sauce is supposed to run through that hole and uh, add extra flavor. And uh, just uh, so you know, uh, if any of you is interested, I know that uh, a few, at least a couple of people from this uh, um, beautiful uh, meeting are from out of state. I think we have somebody from Florida. I think we have somebody from New York. But if those that are closer than Florida and New York, uh, be aware that you can, uh, um, contact us directly uh, if you're interested in our products, in our bucatini, in our pasta. These products that Mattia is using uh, during this demonstration are all available through our restaurant. So don't feel uh, intimidated. Just let us know what you need and we'll provide you anything uh, delivered or for pickup or whatever uh, uh, better way uh, fits best. As well, uh, I would like to see basically your progress after this class. I wanna see you guys practicing or, make, or making this recipe. Uh, even ask me question, ask me trick, like, hey, Mattia, my cacio pepe got really lumpy. What, what should I change? You know, I wanna see you practicing and getting a master to this kind of pasta, because basically, whenever you're going wrong, that's what you're gonna get. So if you can make it better at your home, that's gonna be a satisfaction right there. You wanna go to a, a Roman restaurant and say, oh, Chef Marcelli like told me the cacio pepe. This is not cacio pepe. You can send it back. This is a squash of pasta. No, no, we can do that. So this is the sauce. Already smell like a matriciana. Pecorino, guanciale, tomato sauce. You don't need the guanciale to cook uh, with the sauce too much because you, you already have the fat from the guanciale. That's all the flavor you need. And then basically you have the crispiness of the guanciale uh, intact because if you're gonna cook with tomato sauce, then you're just gonna have those slimy pieces of guanciale in the in the sugo. Uh, I don't really like that. Okay. 
So we're going to start the fire for our matrichana. We're going to put our book at me on the sauce. Basically, you mix it with the sauce. Yeah, Popo. They are concentrated. Okay, this is going to be our matriciana. So, for any of the recipes we use, no oil. That's really important. Really, really important. These are other plates from another friend of mine. I guess Mattia uh, is always promoting his friends. I promote mine, okay? So just in case. So another I'm good, just kidding. Another good thing that I was mentioning about when you cook the pasta is to leave a cup of the pasta water with you because you can always add uh, some of the pasta water if you need to get the sauce a little bit loosey. It's, it's, it's really important for all the pasta that I show. You know, always keep some pasta water with you because you're gonna need it. And this is our carbon uh, water channel ready. We finish it. Get the big chunk of pepperino. Yes. Mi raccomando, pecorino romano. See this? Make sure that it gets that. Okay, don't get full. Be careful. Be generous with pecorino, but not too generous because remember, very salty. This is the Easy. Amazing. Make sure to cut the guanciale in big pieces because you want to have that nice and crunchy. You, you want to have the taste of the guanciale with your pasta. Mattia. Mattia. Yes. Jacopo <laughs> is asking peperoncino or no peperoncino? That's, that's up to you. That's up to you. Depends about the guanciale that you bought. Some guanciale really have a lot of spices to this. A lot of uh, pepper, a lot of chili flakes. So, Taste your guanciale first. I don't mind putting peperoncino on the I like it. But if the guanciale is already a lot of spiciness, uh, I just go with the pecorino. The a traditional recipe, uh, the one with tomato, not the one without. Um, um, on occasions, uh, they, they require, they require, they um, added the peperoncino, the chili. But it's, uh, it's more of a personal thing than uh, um, the recipe itself. Okay, so before we go any further, and before you guys start asking questions, because we've been going through so many flavors, I wanna share the first bite with Mattia while you guys are watching. I wish you could taste it with us, I really do. So Mattia, prendi la forchetta. Eccoci qua. Make sure that you get a nice piece of guanciale on your first bite, and buon appetito. <laughs> My God, I'm suffering. <sighs> Buonissimo. Kevin, Grazie. what about you, Kevin? <laughs> Kevin? I would like to give a, a round of applause to Mattia Marcelli, our chef. Grazie. No, I want to say thank you to everybody that uh, get with us today. I hope uh, you yes. guys get some uh, nice tips and tricks for making your uh, Roman specialties at home. Uh, as I say, I'm available for any kind of question and I would like to see progress. Uh, as I say, the first pasta you're gonna make probably is not gonna taste good. That's a good thing because you need to learn from the mistake that you make. Uh, there's always a first time for everything, uh, but I'm sure after this pasta class, you guys gonna, gonna rock it in the kitchen and I hope 
you guys want to make the perfect cacio e pepe. Okay, somebody with a very small wine and bar knowledge uh, um, by the name of uh, Jacopo Rosito. I'm, uh, I'm being ironic because he's one of the excellences in uh, uh, bartending uh, in the country. Uh, ask a very important question. What wine would you recommend with these dishes? Very, very important. Um, my uh, career started in this industry from wine before food kicked in. So I, excuse me, I have to tell, I'm still learning from this uh, Zooming. Uh, anyways, uh, so we started with uh, um, the Carbonara followed by the Cacio e Pepe and then the Amatriciana. Don't be scared uh, and be uh, realistic with the fact that uh, a red sauce uh, pasta obviously is not gonna uh, call a white wine. And the other very important thing is that we, you wanna try to stay as territorial as possible. So we're talking about Lazio region where Rome is. And uh, this is the land of Frascati for white wines and uh, Cesanese for red grapes. Uh, that I, there are the two uh, wines that I would recommend and uh, uh, have fun with, uh, with these dishes. Obviously with uh, a Cacio e Pepe and a Carbonara, I will go with, uh, probably with a Cacio e Pepe with a, a nice gentle Frascati uh, Superiore. With uh, Carbonara, I will probably go a little more intense. With Carbonara, you can be a little more uh, adventurous. And uh, if you can find a light, gentle red, could be okay. But in my opinion, uh, the match made in heaven is with uh, a nice uh, full body white. Um, Amatriciana, definitely uh, go into Cesanese. Remember, these are grapes that are native of Lazio region. Uh, Cesanese is. Frascati is not the grape, it's the dominate, uh, uh, denomination, uh, the DOC or DOCG, based on uh, where they're uh, from. Uh, so Frascati uh, for non-tomato uh, based uh, dishes and uh, Cesanese for those dishes that are uh, more uh, oriented versus uh, terse, uh, richer, heavier dishes, such as a matriciana, or you probably heard of the way we make tripe in Lazio, or oxtail, coda alla vaccinara, and, uh, and so on. So these are all fair and very valid and important questions. So uh, I would love, as Mattia said, to have a segue on this meeting and uh, uh, interact with all of you, uh, see pictures of your uh, of the dishes that we put together tonight. And uh, if you have questions on the specific producers, on specific wines, feel free to ask us. I would love to, we are real people. And uh, please don't get full with uh, what people say, this is the new normal. No, I refuse to accept this statement. The new normal is getting together with people again and make it happen soon. It's going to take a little time, but eventually we'll get there. So uh, cheers to all of you. I wish I could uh, have a glass of wine with uh, all of you and hear your voices and uh, laughs and, uh, and everything. But I promise you we will soon. Thank you, Mattia and Gianluca. Do you have... Uh, news about the reopening. Gotcha. What, what are the playing? Uh, California, uh, California hasn't announced any uh, reopening for uh, restaurants and bars yet. Uh, we're sensing that we are two or three weeks uh, uh, after uh, Europe. What's happening in Europe? Uh, given that uh, south of uh, southern of uh, United States, they already kind of reopened. Uh, we believe, we are hoping to uh, get back on track uh, even uh, in a smaller capacity as they announced uh, by the first or second week of June. But hey. as of now, we are fully operating and starting next week, we're going to be lunch and dinner. Actually, we're going to be uh, open through from noon until 9 p.m. almost every day of the week. 
So if you guys, uh, if those that are local, that are close, uh, wants to um, uh, taste uh, our food, uh, don't feel um, intimidated. Just uh, let us know and uh, we'll be happy to uh, have it ready at the restaurant if you want to see uh, our face from uh, six feet uh, distance or we can try to deliver it ourselves uh, if you're not too far. Perfect. Thank you, Gianluca. Thank, thanks, everyone, for enjoying the class. Uh, we will send you on Monday uh, the video so you can uh, review the recipe and try uh, your plate. And maybe if you want, you can send us the pictures so you, we can <laughs> share uh, the moment. Um, Absolutely. And also we, we will send all the information about the store that um, Gianluca and Mattia have uh, so you can buy the products there and try your pastas at home and that's it. Uh, we stay healthy and safe. Thank you so very much everybody. Thank you. Grazie. Thank you so much. Wow. Grazie. Ciao ciao. Ciao ciao. Ciao, Ciao a tutti. Bye, Ciao, bye, 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 are you already drunk? Oh, oh. beautiful! <laughs> nice! And then... Wow. David's here too! David, what's up? Bella <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys. Grazie. Daniel! Ciao, Belli. Ciao! Così deve fare la caccia e pepe a tua moglie, Daniel. Oh, sì, finalmente la parte di... Caccia e pepe che mi deve venire bene. Che ti dà due mosse di yoga. Paolo, bravo, che bello, ma tu ci insegni a noi. Bravo Paolo. <ride> Ciao ragazzi. Uh, mute yourself. <ride> Ciao.